Hey, West Coast Johnny, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So I just got back from camping last weekend and it was a lot of fun, but both nights I slept in my trailer, I was freezing because my door does not have the rubber weather stripping on it. The reason it doesn't have it on is because when I put it on, the door won't shut. And the reason it won't shut all the way is because when I put that lock installation and that metal plate in my door it just makes the door uh, closed too much so now what I need to do is figure out how to make it come out about another half inch so we're gonna do that today so we can continue camping and put our weather stripping on so uh, let's get started follow me okay now see this here's my door with the rubber strip on it's not on permanently I, I just set it on but look at that see how it's like there's like no space that's really really what I want so I need to make my door shut a little tighter than this right about here right there I want it to click shut because that'll be perfect so what I'm gonna have to do is um, take some of this paint off grind the metal down to the bare metal that piece of metal I put in here in my last video and I'm gonna weld a little piece of metal that just brings everything out a little bit and that might just be all I need to do so I'm gonna get started right now so I have this little scrap yard of metal I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this see that that's a giant praying mantis watch this isn't that something so in all this metal uh, little scraps of metal that I, I try to reuse as much as I can I don't, so I have to keep buying metal I found this little uh, scrap that I cut off of a piece of uh, exercise equipment so what I'm gonna do we're gonna use this to fix our scamp door I'm gonna cut some of this off clean it up really nice and we're gonna try to weld it right onto that uh, plate so let's start all right let me show you what I'm doing I got this uh, piece of metal. I put some tape. I cut the tape uh, about a half inch. And that is going to be my line. I don't want to use a felt pen. Uh, on the chrome, it's not going to show up too well. So I'm going to uh, just cut this off so I could use this piece of metal underneath as my scrap. So I'm going to put it in my Wilton vise. I got a new vise. It's, it's, it's an old one. But it's uh, brand new to me, and I got it all cleaned up. I refurbished it, put a lot of fluid film, got everything going real nice. So. All right, I marked where the striker hits. See that? It's right here. It hits right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean all this paint off when it shuts it'll be about half inch out all right I wanted to show you what I got set up so here's my ground this piece of metal is going to be welded right there for my door and that's going to bring everything out so I'm going to go ahead and weld that in place I ground all the uh, fiberglass and, and resin and everything that was on there down to the bare metal Okay, let me show you how it's working. So I got my rubber on, and see how that? It's perfect. See that? How it fits really tight. So here's the piece that I just welded on. I gotta clean it up. We're gonna clean it up, do some nice body work with some filler and sand it real nice so we could paint it. But see that? That little extra space that I gave myself. It's shut and it's tight. This is tight and it is shut. I can lock it, open it up, there it is, see that? So we brought it out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead, finish putting the rubber on, and uh, start cleaning up where I welded. So I got the rubber on the door, and after you push it by hand, you got to get a little mallet like this, the little ball peen, and just go like that, because you'd be surprised how much more it goes in. And the other thing is you want this to really be lined up really nice nice and straight so you want to hit it in all all the way so now what I got to do 
right here because I had to grind all the fiberglass off down to the bare or most of it for the bare metal so I could weld I got to refiberglass this right now so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some fiberglass I got these little pieces I cut and they're gonna go like that so I measured and pre-cut all my little pieces all of these are gonna get used in order so that um, from this way in so so that when I start to do the work you, know, you don't want to mix up your resin and then start measuring and cutting your fiberglass try to get everything all ready to go so that you can just you know not rush or anything all right so what I'm using for fiberglass uh, it's pretty much the same stuff I always use and I know it's probably getting harder to read it's, it's getting dirty but um, if this is just laminating resin a product called surface seal which makes it so that um, when everything sets the fiberglass isn't sharp doesn't have sharp corners and it'll poke you and all that because you don't want fiberglass splinters because they don't break down in the body okay then this is methyl ethyl ketone peroxide or MEKP it's the catalyst right here you don't even need this but I always use it and then I'm just going to put some in my little, uh, I just recycle. And there's no rolling to be done on this repair because well, there's no room to roll. So what I'm going to do is just like the, the dabbing, the, the dabbing method. And I cut off about a quarter of an inch of all the loose hairs and errant hairs and stuff. Because you want a nice, you want it. So when you're going like this, you're getting the bubbles out. You want it a little stiff, but not too stiff. This is not the kind of resin that you would use if you were building a really fancy, like a coffee table or something, and you wanted uh, to put things in it and cover it, you know? You see a lot of that resin. That's a different kind of resin. That is more of a casting resin. This is laminating, and it's for bonding things together tiny tiny bit perfect we should have about well over a minute of work time which is plenty the resin on our clean raw fiberglass after I sanded and grinded it I cleaned it with acetone that's super important okay now this big one's gonna go right here Barely, barely, barely am I dragging anything because you could easily move the fiberglass. You have to go so gently that you almost aren't touching it. I'm just helping lay it flat, getting the bubbles out, making sure it's everything is together and well saturated. Okay. I'm going to show you how it's set up and dried. I went ahead and I did a light sand. See that? 
Sorry about the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead now. I got it all nice and smooth. I'm going to mix up some lightweight body filler and put an application of that on. And then maybe after that, depending on how smooth that we can sand that, we may uh, use some finishing putty before we do our prime paint and our rolling and tipping this area again. But that's okay because now that all this is on, see, really important to put on. All right, I'm going to mix up some lightweight body filler. All right. All right, let me show you how it turned out. The door is shut. I got my body filler in there. The new piece. So tomorrow I'm going to sand this really nice. Since it dried really good, I'm going to sand it really nice and put some primer on it so that I can uh, touch up the colors. But my objective of the day is done. That's all I wanted to do is fix that door. So it's getting cold and starting to get dark. So thanks everybody for joining today and please uh, like and subscribe and thanks for all my new subscribers. So, uh, all right, everybody, I'll talk to you soon.